So we're on the common race track here, dwarves. As stated previous in the, the overview video, dwarves are strong, stocky, slow to trust, and hold long grudges. A dwarf is much more long-lived and tends to distrust races with a long history of discord with them. Um, they do, however, find the good in many races. It's not this blind hate. They don't like that elves tend to be sort of apart from civilization and apart from other races, and that bothers them. Uh, they think of elves as being sort of flightly, flighty and frivolous. Um, maybe, and that's probably just how a dwarf views it. However, they do respect the elves' combat ability and their smithing ability. That they make very fine masterwork um, smithing, and they do respect that. So, in battle, especially against a common enemy like an orc, an orcish horde, elves can be trusted in battle. But there's that surface level tension at all times. And the dwarves tend to be a little bit more emotional than elves, so that may come out in other ways. Being strong and hardy, the base dwarf, before we get into sub races, grants you a plus two to your constitution score, which makes sense. They're very sturdy folk. They're used to living in um, you know, mountainous conditions. Uh, they just tend to be a bit tougher than the average bear, which is great. Though your size is medium, and that has to do more with kind of your girth, your overall build, your speed is 25 feet, and that's because you're shorter than a human. Um, you're still considered medium, so you are granted no bonuses or disadvantages uh, for being small or large. You are just medium, but your speed is 25 feet, so you can move five squares in a round as opposed to six. However, being a dwarf, uh, many non-human races have this ability called dark vision, so you can see in low and dim light uh, up to 60 feet is the base. So you get dark vision, we can, we can just call it dark vision 60. There are some other races that have superior dark vision that doubles that number up to 120 feet, which is pretty awesome. And then there's some creatures that have dark vision, 30. But if all you see is dark vision, it's assumed it is 60 feet, up to 60 feet, which is very good. Also being a dwarf uh, and being in mountainous regions, you have resistance to poison. This means you have advantage on saving throws versus poison, and if you do take poison damage, you are resistant to it which means you take half damage. So that's pretty cool. You were also granted Dwarven combat training, uh, which is proficiency with certain weapons. This is completely separate from your class, which is a big help, especially if you end up being a caster or a class that can't use bladed weapons. You have training in bladed weapons because of your Dwarven combat training. You have a specific training in the Great Axe, the Hand Axe, the Warhammer and the Lighthammer, which makes a lot of sense given the Dwarven lifestyle. You know, a lot of masonry, a lot of hard labor, a lot of battle. That's a dwarf. Awesome. You also gain one tool proficiency, and you have a specific choice of three of those tools. Uh, so choose between either uh, Smith's tools, so making stuff, making armor, weapons, that kind of stuff, uh, a brewer's supplies, which allow you to brew drinks, ale, may even help with potion making later and alchemical skills later. Tends to be helpful, but those require other elements, which we'll get to much later. Uh, and finally, mason's tools, so stuff for construction, for making mortar, pestle, um, brick, brick laying, that kind of stuff. So you can build uh, buildings and structures with your mason's tools. The last feature that you get uh, is called stone cunning. And what it does is anytime you want to make a, um, a history check about stonework, um, you are considered proficient in this check and you add double your proficiency bonus to make this check, which also makes sense, again, to that dwarven heritage of understanding um, masonry, stonework, mountains. You get the idea. It's very, very thick in the theming of this particular race. It all makes a lot of sense for the dwarf. You're resistant to poison, you got combat training because 
dwarves, you understand stonework, you've got tool proficiencies, good. This is all great. As a dwarf, you speak two languages, at the start anyway. Common, which everybody speaks, so considered English, but you know, common. And then uh, Dwarvish. Dwarvish it has a lot of hard consonants and a lot of guttural sounds. And because of this, that sort of accent can spill over into other languages that the dwarf might speak, depending on how learned they are, and that's more up to you, the player, or the DM. Um, but you'll also find when you learn other languages, there are other languages that use Dwarvish as their base. So they're written in Dwarvish script, but with a little more slang, or with a new characters thrown in, but the base for it is Dwarvish. That's why the Sylvan language, the base for it is Elvish. And these languages sort of feed into other languages and morph and change. It's a really cool linguistics lesson. The dwarf has two sub-races, the hill dwarf and the mountain dwarf. Hill dwarves tend to be a bit wiser, so your wisdom score will increase by one if you choose that sub-race. You will also get something called dwarven toughness. Dwarven toughness adds one hit point to your hit point total, your hit point maximum, every level, including first level. So every level, on top of whatever you rolled, whatever you got for your constitution modifier, you get one more on top of that every level. Anything that gives you more hit points is awesome, because hit points can be the difference between life and death in this game. And even just one can make a huge difference. The Mountain Dwarf increases your strength score by two, and it gives you additional armor training in light armor and medium armor. Again, this training proficiency is in your race. It is completely separate from your class. This is a big help, especially if you end up choosing a class that has no armor proficiencies. If you end up being a wizard that can wear no armor, this is a big deal because you're proficient with medium armor, light and medium, but you know, up to medium armor. That can be a huge help, just granted from your race alone. Now dwarves, I've never been a dwarf. I've never played a dwarf. I think in, in another campaign, I'm very soon I'm gonna try and play a dwarf and see how I like it. But many students, many fellow players, many friends have played dwarves in many different classes and been extremely successful. My favorite was seeing a dwarven sorcerer because they're proficient in medium armor. And this dwarven sorcerer had a warhammer and a battle ax and is running around casting firebolt and having a grand old time and not dying right away. Uh, because their armor was high enough and then their dexterity was high enough on top of it to make sure that they didn't just straight up be killed. It's a smart thing to do. And uh, I'm going to say this probably for all the races. You can be whatever class you want in whatever race you want, especially now that in 5th edition the detriments have been removed from the ability score increases. You will always gain something from your race. And that's a big deal. So I hope that was helpful in giving you a little bit more information about what the dwarf is all about and a little more in depth uh, on its features and its different abilities and all the cool traits that you get when you pick a dwarf. If it's not for you, don't worry, we're hitting up elf next time. Next time. May your swords be sharp, your magic be potent, and your racial identity fluid? Bye now. Thanks very much, everyone, for tuning in to today's episode of The DM's Den. Uh, if you are interested in other videos, you can click the random video that's probably playing right now above all the flames, cooking my face off. If you are from the Book of Faces, you can also find my Facebook page right here. And if you are just overflowing in, uh, in gold, you have way too much gold in your bag of holding, maybe uh, you could spend some of it. Uh, I am running a Patreon, so you can also find that right here. I hope you have a wonderful day, and uh, don't put any pets in your handy haversack. Trust me, it's a bad plan. See ya!